and welcome to November on the standpoint. First week in November, thus far the Lord has brought us, and we say hallelujah, somebody. Few days to Christmas. No, 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 I won't count it weeks or few days, and you know I love Christmas. When I'm talking about Christmas, you know what I'm talking about? Please, all I need is for you to donate one brand new shoe for a little girl or boy living in underserved communities. Let me put it this way, rural communities. Shoes have a way of boosting the confidence of that little child in the rural community during Christmas. Seeing himself or herself wear a brand new shoe to church. Now you, you as a grown up, how do you feel when you have a brand new shoe? All you need to do is to donate a shoe or two. Brand new, I don't want that slightly used, yes I will take. For children from best to 16 years, both male and female. So please, 0543 618182. 0543 618182. You can bring us the shoes or call it, I'll come pick them up. Or you can also send us money so we go and buy it. We don't want to wait till Christmas. It gets more expensive during Christmas. So this time we want to buy it ahead of time. Anyway, welcome to Standpoint and November today. You can call it the Afro chic edition of the standpoint. Mm -hmm. I have some students from the University of Ghana here, and it's going to be exciting. I don't know how it's going to go, but I can tell you this. You are in for a treat. They say they have questions for me. I also have questions for them, you know. So you stay back, enjoy it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be educative, informative. And trust me, at the end of the one hour, you will never be the same. Let me say thank you to GTP for this fabric. This is new style. My dress is by Brie Redra. Thank you so much. Always making me look girly. Hair by Inshla GH. And of course, makeup at the underscore global or the global on Facebook. You can follow them. You can call them. Their numbers are on the screens. And of course, always makeup products by Note Cosmetics. We take a break when we come back. We meet first of all. Dr. Ama Opukwajima, she doesn't like me calling her, but I call her there. She's a doctor. In fact, she has two doctors. Okay, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Opukwajima and her student from the University of Ghana. We'll be back. Exciting, isn't it? It's been over a year since we had studio audience. And I mean, I'm so excited about uh, today because we have young people who are going to give us, you know, a nice time, educate us, entertain, ask questions. And it's going to be really, I told you it's going to be Afro chic edition. But don't forget, breast cancer is still real and we need to take it seriously especially as women and you the men when you get intimate with your wives or your girlfriends just make sure that you also look out for their health their well-being if you feel a lump don't take it for granted let her know and let her go to the hospital to check and we women we need to do the self-examination as well Breast cancer is real, it's treatable, it's manageable. You don't need to die from breast cancer. Well, welcome back to the standpoint. Let me say thank you to GTP. They are our sponsors. GTP says they are on the Oga campaign, original, genuine, and authentic. Make sure that any fabric you buy is genuine, it's authentic, and it is original. And you can make sure of this when you buy from any of the accredited dealers across the country or buy from any wooden shop. Or you can do as I do. I love to do that. Go online, www.bygtp.com, and you are there. We also sponsored by Esther and Balloons and Accessories. Everything Balloons and Accessories. Just get in touch with them. They are at Mokola, Kowlin. They are at... Um, 
uh, Swinters Road near the Flower Port, you know, Palace Mall. They are at East Legon, at Chimota, Wager. They are all over. And wherever you are in this country and beyond, recently they went to do a program in Nigeria. Just call them and they'll be there to make sure your occasion is as beautiful as you want it to be. We are also sponsored by Mary Stopes International. And today, let me find out their message for you. Their message today is um, on contraception. Whether you are focusing on your career, studies, or a new baby, consider contraception. A consultation with Marie Stopes Clinics can help you stay in control with the best method for you. Call 0800208585. That's 0800208585 for consultation. You know, if you've read any of my books, especially my first book, A Bit of Me, there is a whole chapter on owning your vagina as a woman take control you decide when where how what whatever it is because god gave it to you we don't want pregnancy by accident it does happen but then be on guard well today it's about afro chic and on my set i have one of my favorite people in this world yes she is he <laughs> dr Ama Opoku Ajima, she is a lecturer, a mentor, a feminist, an activist, yeah. a lover of students. Yeah. Good to have you on the Thank standpoint. You. Thank you, Auntie Gifty. Always happy to be here. This is the first time you're on the standpoint proper as a guest. Yes, proper as a guest. The other time you were the host. Yes. <laughs> So let me probably welcome you to the standpoint. Thank you. Now today you are here with some of your students. Yes. And uh, you tell me that you're here for, you know, a course or a program on Afro Chic. Can you elaborate a bit on okay. that? Okay. So as part of the many things I do, yes. when I'm not teaching my students at the University of Ghana, I work um, with an organization okay. called World Learning Inc. So this is a global organization with presence in about 15 countries. Okay. And one of the things they do is to run exchange programs for students, uh, students from colleges in America. Okay. So for young people studying in America, they have an opportunity to spend some time away from America in other countries. And I work with the Ghana, so the Ghana version. So ours is okay. the SIT study abroad Ghana. So every few months, actually, twice a year, during the spring semester and the fall semester, we have young people from American colleges or colleges in the U.S. They come to Ghana. Right. So they come to be part of the culture, the community. Before COVID, they would actually stay with um, Ghanaian families. So they okay. have something they call a homestay. They would stay with Ghanaian families. Um, they would attend lectures. They would travel around the country. They would... Um, Visit people like you, visit people like Nana and Sakwao. Okay. Everything to be part of the culture. Okay. And the, um, so we call this their study experiential learning. So okay. learning by actually experiencing it. Because okay. we know that you learn more when you are part of something rather than being sat and being told um, what to listen. So, so that's what, yeah, part of what I do okay. with SIT. So, yeah, we have. Um, yeah, before, before you introduce that, how long have you been involved with this? Because I've had the privilege of meeting two groups. Yes. So SIT has actually been in Ghana for close to 20 years, but I, and it went on a, um, a break in 2015, I think, because okay. of Ebola. So there was, yeah. there was limited travel to West Africa oh and then resumed in 2018. So I've been working with SIT Ghana since 2018. Oh, how has it been for you? Oh, I love it. This <laughs> is actually our fifth group of students and it's always a different experience. Yeah, I love, yeah, I love students. I know. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So now... I think they're going to introduce themselves, right? Yes. Okay, so when you mention your name, you tell me where you're coming from and maybe the name of your college. Okay, yes. all right. So we start from... Okay. Oh. And we like it, to do it in Chi. We like to impress. Oh, okay. Me pamo chon pache yo mate Okay. Okay. Yefreme Michaela, Meko School, Swarthmore College, Mefiri, Newark, Delaware, or... Newark, Wo, Delaware, Wo, America. Okay. Why are they more? <laughs> Yo, um. I like that. Yo. Open it off here. Okay. <laughs> Medin de Cyrus. Um, Mefie, um, New York, Wo, America. Okay. Me school, yeah, Illinois Wesleyan. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Hi. Your friend me Felicia na me three din de ya. Ya. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me three Twin Cities, wo Minnesota, wo America. Okay. Um, me skuni ye McAllister College. Okay. Medasipa. Miss Medasipa. Okay. All right, so your friend is Regina Ratiesu Barton. I am the Assistant Programs Coordinator. Okay, nice to have you. Your friend is Fenia, my friend is Germany, my school is Swarthmore College. Okay, Germany is here for now. Yes, Germany. Where in Germany? Oh, Mannheim. Okay, you. My friend is Aisha. My friend is Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, May School, uh, Claremont McKenna College, which is in uh, Southern California. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, from Aisha. May um, New York City, well, United States. May um, School, Dickinson College in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, from me, Delali. Me fi Ghana ha me te Accra. Let me go school at UPSA. UPSA, yeah, okay. Thank you. Medinda Diana. Okay. Um, me fi Nairobi or Kenya. Okay. <laughs> me school at Grinnell College okay. in Iowa. All right. Mm -hmm. Iowa, right? Okay. Yeah, from me Alicia. Me fi Nassau, wo the Bahamas. Okay. And me school. Is Carleton College in Minnesota. Okay. All <laughs> right. Um, if, <laughs> Shirley, um, Mefidi, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, I attend the University of Richmond in Virginia. Virginia, okay. Medinde Melina, Mefri, Illinois, well, United States. Mm. And uh, me, me school, yeah, Cornell University in upstate New York. In New York, okay. Okay, from me, Mark. I'm from Ghana, I'm from Accra, and I'm from UPSC. UPSC, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm from Ghana, why not? Uh-huh. I'm from Esther, I'm from Ghana, I'm from Ghana, and I'm from Ghana. Okay, all right. You, you, and I'm from Ghana, and I'm from Ghana. How long have they been here? <laughs> this is their uh, fourth week. Yeah, the end, we are ending the fourth week. And they can actually... Oh yeah, actually a big part of their experience is to learn chi. Chi. So they've been taking classes and they, 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 yeah, you always see them with their nose trying to the language. Yeah, so that's good. That's you are good. impressed. I'm very impressed. <laughs> very impressed. Well, that keep, I mean, clap for yourselves. You know, <laughs> you have done well. Wow. <laughs> Because there are people who live in Ghana, they can't speak this exactly. tree, you know. Exactly. Well, let me take care of when we come back. I know you want to know a bit about me, so I'll tell you a bit about me. And then you can ask um, the questions. Interestingly, I have a segment of this program called A Bit of Me. And I have a book on A Bit of Me. So I'll tell you a bit of me when we <laughs> get back. Let me say thank you to our supporters. That's Gogot Yogot. As a woman, Yogot is very good for you. And if it has to be yogurt, it has to be gogot yogurt made right here in Ghana by Painter Foods. Thank you to Awake Purified Mineral Water by Casapreco Company Limited, Kodam's Gift and Stationery, House of Food, Antivera and the team. Thank you so much. We say thank you to Yep Cleaning Services who so make sure our environment is always clean. Anything cleaning, just call them. They fumigate as well. Thank you to Cake Technique, Juice Time, and of course, Stunning floral and decor who provide our plants, um, both artificial and natural plants, and we so love them. We take a break when we come back. We'll be hearing from them. We'll be back. Welcome back. 
to the standpoint. If you just join us, I have Dr. Ama Opokwajiman on the set, and she's here with some of her students who have come for an exchange program in Ghana. This is the um, faith group she is uh, handling so far. And if you missed out, you have to watch on YouTube because they introduce themselves in Chi. <laughs> Guy Chi Fa. <laughs> you know. But let me say thank you to our sponsors once again. Thank you to GTP for my fabric. My dress is by Brie Redua. I love it. She always has a way of making me look girly. Mm -hmm. And then thank you to Inshilo GH for my hair. This is a wake up. This is Afro, this is Afro chic, isn't it? Exactly. I was going to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Makeup by at the underscore global on Instagram and on Facebook. She is um, the global. Our makeup products always by Note Cosmetics. And of course, um, Chariel's Beauty Studio uh, did uh, Ames uh, makeup. Now we are back on set. What's the theme for this year's program? Okay, so um, I think this, and this is actually, I said we started in 2018. So mm -hmm. in, since 2018, we've been running on a theme about how Ghana represents um, Africa to the diaspora. Okay. And just this year, so this is actually our first group. The theme is... Um, globalization, cultural legacies, and the Afro chic. So we are just trying to connect how a modern twist on African identity, thinking about our cultural legacy. So Sankofa, when we talk about traditional values and okay. principles in a global world, okay. and how that makes the African a globalized citizen. OK. Yeah. OK. So that's, that's a lot. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I love, I love that. I love that. I will tell you a bit about me. But before then, I want to refresh you with Pizza from Cheesy Pizza. Um, they support the uh, standpoint, and we say thank you to them. So please feel free to eat it and enjoy it, you know, whilst the program goes on. So the ladies, I think we have tissues as well, and uh, water, and we have drinks as well. So they can share it whilst... Um, we go on so thank you we'll come yeah. again and again if you see? <laughs> <laughs> all right so let me tell you a bit about me um my name um is uh, no they said i shouldn't say my name is mm -hmm. i am ohine yuri gifty auntie ohine yuri simply means the chief's wife you know other people go by the name nana yuri is the same thing but from where my husband comes from the prefer Ohene Ire. They are the Aquemus. But I am the last of eight children. Traditionally, I'm a Fanti from the central region, um, from a city. My husband calls his place Republic. I call my place City. Um, very small village in the central region called Asempini. Um, my mom and my dad have both passed. Um, I went to school in Tema. I have a very interesting background. I was conceived in the Volta region, mm -hmm. born in the Eastern region, and raised in Tema, Greater Accra region. You know, and I've lived in Tema all my life. I went to primary school in Tema. I went to Fantasy Girls Secondary School in the Central region. Um, came back to Accra to do my diploma in journalism. And of course, worked for about seven years at GBC, the National Broadcaster, that's the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, TV division, um, until 2013, when I resigned to come and set up on my own. After working there for seven years, I just went back to school in London to do my master's in international journalism. Um, came back and felt that there's the, the, the so much we can do in Ghana when it comes to women. So I came back really on fire. You know how it feels like when you're fresh from school and especially when you go back from here, everything will be fresh and you'll be, you'll be on fire. Charge that, but trust, you know, Dr. Thelma to <laughs> charge you out for the experience. So I came back, but you know how it's like working under somebody. You can't have it your way. Um, I try a few times, get women on the set. You know, I was on the morning show, the first ever morning show on TV in Ghana, I was part of the, you know, the people who started it. What's the word for it? The peace setters yeah. or what? Yeah. yeah. So the very first day started on the 13th of um, February, 1997. Most of you were not born. That's fine. <laughs> That's when it started. I was on it. So I tried to get sometimes I will lobby and we get all women panel. But then after a while, they said, oh, no, we should. So in 2018, I decided to set up. A, new, a platform basically for women that's um, the standpoint which you are on today and so on 11th of um, 
July 2008, we birthed the standpoint. It's been a private production, my private production since then. And in 2015, after being single, not married for 45 years, uh, at the age of 45, I got married, uh, you know, to achieve. Before I got married to achieve, I had so many perceptions. My father was a very traditional man. And uh, the beads you see me wear, my anklets and everything, it's not because I'm a chief's wife. I've always worn it well before, you know, I even knew that there was a chief who existed. When I started wearing the beads, so many things were said. They said I look like a fetish priestess. But today, there are beads named after me. When I started wearing the African prints, they say, oh, it's only the poor people where well, she hasn't got this, that, you know, called her and say, now they use my name to sell, you know, uh, fabrics. A kente is named after me. The kente I wore during my um, traditional ma marriage is named after me. So you go to the market, there's a kente called Gifty Anti Kente. Um, when I got married, I was told that there's so many things that happen at the palace and the traditional system, they don't respect women. I got in there and I realized that it's all about you. So um, I'm a different, you know, um, chief's wife. I went in there, used my experiences. I had charity, to Girl in Aid Foundation, which I helped use, um, pave the fees of school, girls to go to school or to learn a trade or skill. So doing charity, for my husband's village was came easy and through that i've expanded to other areas you heard me talk about the happy feet shoes brand new shoes i used to do it for um Olie dumasa uh, where you visited but last year we did it for edumasa we did it for Akwemufi, we did it for central region we did it for some parts in the other volta region and then the northern region as well so gradually we are expanding but basically I am a woman, I am a feminist, I am a gender activist, I'm an advocate, um, I love everything women and everything feminine. I do not hate men, mm -hmm. I do not bite men, <laughs> you know, because I am married. You need to put that out there. Yes. That <laughs> <laughs> and I've always been a daddy's girl. I tell people my father was the first feminist I knew because my father never put any uh, restrictions on me as a as a woman did everything he could to make sure i go to school i told me to dream and dream big told me something um said what well, the best form of revenge is to succeed yeah so he told me to just succeed 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 and keep going so i keep going i keep going i keep going as a traditional chief's wife i get into trouble sometimes but i'll keep going <laughs> so this is me wow Right, so now I'll just ask a few questions and okay. then um, you can ask. So, yeah. I mean, I've heard you speak so many times and every time I pick up something right. um, different. It's fantastic. But just back to our theme, I find it very interesting how you talked about the use of beads and print. Yeah. I wanted to find how, why is that? Why do you find the need to be in African print? Is there anything part of your identity? Yeah. What, what sort of message are, are you trying to put across with that, with being, even before you became, because yeah. I expect that as a chief, so if you dress a particular right. way, yeah. why was that before? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I told you earlier, my father was a traditional man. In fact, my father was supposed to be a chief, but he felt he was too old. And so, you know, relinquished it for his nephew who is now a chief anyway. My mother's side, my mother too was a queen man. So I grew up on beats. Yeah. And I've always loved a beat. And I'm a rebel. <laughs> I'm stubborn, you know. I, I've always been this person who doesn't understand why something cannot be. Or I can't do certain things. Especially when my father t tells me that I can be anything. And, you know, do whatever I want to do. So, first it was a rebellion. When mm. they told me that... You know, I can't wear this. I can't do that. It was a rebellion. I wanted them to know, no, I can do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Then it became an identity. When I was at GBC, there were times when I'll be suspended because they said my, my necklace, my beads was too bold. 
or my bangles, my, my beats were too bold. I could be suspended from reading the news. And um, after a while, they'll bring me back and I'll continue doing it. And then it got to a time when I don't wear it, they will tell me, but everybody identifies you to do this. Why are you not wear it? And I love time. I mean, when you look around some of the pictures I have, then when we go out, you see that I just like doing my scarf, tying my hair. Then we call it duku. So sometimes they will ask you. And before I can, nobody was doing that on air. People were just wearing, braiding their hair or their own permed hair. But I would go tie my head, do the duku and everything. And it became an identity. And it's still with me. I still do it. So everywhere I go, people, sometimes from afar, people say, oh, I realized it's you because I saw your, uh, your beads and your anklet. And as I grew up, I also understood that this is us. This is our identity. This is what makes us stand out as Ghanaians, as Africans. The Europeans have their way of life. The Americans do. The Jews do. The beads, the African print is part of us. Our skin as black people. And of course, we have Africans who are, you know, dark, Ghanaians who are fair, naturally. So that's what makes us stand out. We can never be like the Americans. We can never be like the British. We can never be like the Germans. And we shouldn't. And we shouldn't. Because there's, there's beauty in diversity. Yeah. And we all look different. Even when I, I told him, when I thought I was, you know, the girl, mm -hmm. started wearing suits and everything, I still wear my beads yeah. with my trouser suit and my, you know, skirt suit and everything. When I went to school to do my master's in London, even in winter, I mean, when you take off my jacket, you see my beads. My, and they used to call me the, um, the African queen. And no, I didn't even know a chief existed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about him. This was in 2004, 2005. You know, but it became my identity. And, and that's what makes us stand out. Yeah. Well, when I was going to marry a chief, oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm a Christian, so like, you are going to marry a chief. They pour libation. They do this. They do that. They do but I've been there. October 15th will be, what, six years since I got I So when I go, I sleep in the palace. We have tradition. This is us. Yeah. But it's just symbolic. Yeah. It's just symbolic. That's yeah. all. Wow. Mm. Whew. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Do you have any questions? Anybody? Okay, let okay. me take a break when we come, but by then you'd have composed yourself and then your question's ready <laughs> you know, for me. So let me take a break. Well, let me say thank you once again to our sponsors, GTP. GTP is on the Oga campaign, original, genuine, and authentic. Make sure you buy from any of the accredited dealers you know, across the country. That's uh, Make sure it's original, genuine, and authentic. Or go to any wooden shop. To buy it, you can also buy online www.buygtp.com. It's so important now. People are on social media telling people to pay money to them, and then they will send them GTP. GTP doesn't do that. If you're buying on ball, you don't do that. Don't let anybody scam you. Okay, thank you to Esther and Balloons and Accessories. Everything Balloons and Accessories gets in touch with, and you know, balloons are for all occasion. They have branches at um, Mokola, they have at Flowerport, near Flowerport on the Spinters Road, Wager, Achimota, and AC Legon. And of course, we are also sponsored by Marie Stopes International. Let me read their message to you today. Is it about contraception? And it's simple. It says, whether you are focusing on career studies or a new baby, consider contraception. A consultation with Marie Stopes in clinics can help you stay in control with the best method for you. Just call 0800-208585. 0800-208585. We'll be back. to their standpoint i'm enjoying the show honestly you're putting me on the spot right mm -hmm. but that's fine <laughs> thank you to awake purified mineral water puma drink by casa preco company limited go go to your go to juice time house of food yep cleaning services codams and of course stunning decor and floral for this 
beautiful these plants you know natural and artificial can you believe that something i'm just looking at it whether it's dried if watered it or not uh -huh. i love plants you know that's me we say thank you to all of them especially mrs oferipoko and the family we are so grateful to them now before i took a break i mean you were just asking any questions for me okay um okay we we'll start with him hi I just wanted to ask, how exactly do you connect your contemporary life with your traditional values? Okay. All right. Excellent. So, as you can see, I'm wearing my print. It's not the slit and cover. We have, you know, the slit. Those days, they used to wear a slit and cover the chief's wife. I'm still wearing my beads. I love this. very traditional about me. And... Everything evolves. Everything is dynamic. Everything changes. But what you have to do is you don't lose the core value. So I'll go to the palace or any chief's, you know, mm -hmm. palace or occasion wearing this. Normally I will add my ahenema, that's the native slippers, you know, and with my beads and I'll sit gracefully, mm -hmm. you know. It doesn't take anything. And I know what to wear to what occasion. There are certain occasions that I definitely have to wear a slate and cover, be that kente or cloth. And there's some that I have to do the dance synchron. If you look behind you, there's a picture. And that's what we call dance synchron. You know, so what I do is I combine it beautifully. That's a way of life. I mean, I was telling, you know, Ama that one of the things that painful things that I've had to sacrifice is crossing my legs. Mm -hmm. I love to cross my leg, but since I got married, traditionally it's interpreted to be bad uh, body language. I could have said that I'm a feminist, so, you know, but, but then not crossing my leg, what does it take from me? Yeah. It doesn't take anything from me. It endears me to the people. Yeah. It helps me to influence them. You know, you went to Edumasa, you saw how my husband loves education. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he explained to you why his passion is education, yeah. because he's a, um, this uh, yes, and the mm -hmm. challenges he went through. So when I got, and I love education as well. I'm everything I am today because of education. So I decided to set up the library. That's a whole story by itself, right? But when I set up the library, it helped promote literacy in the area. For the first time in the history of Ghana, the children, some three children from that area became participants of the spelling bee in Ghana. Wow. Yes. They qualified to be, wow. yeah. Yeah. And this was in um, 2016. You know, so I use my journalism, my connections, the people I know, the people who go to Edumasa now, the people who know about Edumasa, who didn't know, there are people who, were, who even came from there, didn't know, didn't want to hear about it. But because of the platform I had, as a journalist, as a contemporary woman who knows what's up, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I <laughs> used it to project in the areas. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, I noticed around the room you have different awards for previous campaigns. Yeah. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about current or upcoming projects that you're working on and maybe the impact they're having. Okay, great. So currently um, I have the three charities. That's the Girl in Need Foundation, the Award Dance for Reading Project, and then the Happy Feet. Um, the Girl in Need Foundation, that's helping girls go back to school. We started 10 years ago, well before I got married or even knew that um, a chief a existed by name, Nana and Sakwao. So, um, and it's through the standpoint because I had parents coming in talking about how their children were abused or, you know, misused, it's, it's something. And then I tried to probe further and realize that it's lack of finances. I remember one of my first girls I supported with um, the foundation her mother used to fry donuts. We call it both fruit. They know and love it. Okay. And um, she told me that her mother would send her every time to go to her uncle for school fees. But she's sure her mother knows that her uncle abuses her every time she goes for the school fees. Oh so I tried to ask the uh, mother. And what she said to me was, 
but I can't pay her fees. What do I do? She says she wants to go to school. What do I do? So that made me start the foundation, asking Ghanaians to give me one Ghana city or more. Then my whole idea was, we were 30 million Ghanaians. No, then we're 20 something million Ghanaians. Even if I have 1 million Ghanaians giving one Ghana city, I have 1 million you know, Ghana cities. So what can't I do with that? So we started with that, paying their school fees. There were girls who will come here and will pay everything from their underwear to toothbrush to, you know, um, toothpaste to sponge to bath, to bath and everything will buy. For some of them, they left in work, going to school from home. We managed to get them to go to boarding house. Um, to the extent at a point with social welfare, we even supported some of the girls there. And then came in the... I would dance to a reading project. As I told you, I love, I mean, education is everything, and I love reading. For me, reading opened my eyes, opened my mind to. So I went to government school. Then they used to laugh at us, it wasn't the best of education, but reading really spurred me on. And today I'm an author because I can imagine, I can dream, I can, you know, picture things in my mind, you know, when I knew names of streets in London when I hadn't been to the airport before, yeah. <laughs> or from books, you know, so I wanted them to find, I didn't want the children to grow up in, a, in an environment where their dream is limited to all they see around them. Yeah. So these are the three I'm working on currently. Okay, so you, you talk about the education you give to the girls from the infants to boarding house and all mm -hmm. that. So I wanted to know if you have plans or you invest in women, like ladies, who want to really go into technology. The Girl in Need Foundation is for girls from birth to 18 years. We cap it at 18 years. Of course, there are some in tertiary institutions that we support them. We don't pay the full fees. We support them financially to be there. The reason we cap at 18 is because at 18, you are an adult. You need to be able to fend for yourself. Whatever it takes, whether it's selling, whether it's sweeping, whatever it is, that is when you need to find dignity in hard work. So we do not, tertiary, we do not support, after 18 years, we do not pay the full fees. We will support you, but you also need to do something. You know, you, I'm sure you can ask them, um, Felicia and others in Europe, they are at the university, but they're still working part-time somewhere to support themselves. Their parents maybe can pay, or most of them, it's maybe on scholarship or they don't pay, but it's still work to earn some money. That's what we want to inculcate in young women. You know, this habit of um, dignity in labor, being able to work for yourself. I started as a floor manager. A floor manager, you stand behind the cameras, you raise your hands. And <laughs> yes, uh, when you Google my story, I've been, you know, a carpenter before. Carpentry, I mean, it's not really full-time carpentry, but, you know, we used to do wall hangings and everything. I'm not saying everybody must go through my path, but there must be some fire in you to be able to stand on your own from the age of 18 and beyond. But below 18, you're still a child and you need to be in school. 18 years, you can take a break for a year or two to work, to make some money to go back to school. It's all part of the process. Yeah, um, so just, so, so that's a very interesting question. Mm. I, I can understand your resources are limited mm. and you would yeah. have to cap it somewhere, but um, the American example is hard mm. for me to take because an 18 year old Ghanaian child mm -hmm. who is probably just out of secondary school, isn't he? At yeah. 18, you are out of secondary school, it's hard. When I finished the university at whatever age, it was hard for me to find a job. Yeah. I hate to say, but one of the reasons I decided to just do a master's, mm. 
because I, if I thought I was just going to spend a whole year running around looking for a job, I might as well just do a master's. I had funding for my investors to do it. Anyway, good story. And it <laughs> encouraged me to go do my PhD. Yes, so, yeah. But it's hard. Our system is hard yeah. for young girls. I do. To, I do so get So I was it. going to link it to how if you help somebody and the person is at 18, do you sort of follow up with them, try to lead them to places? That's why I said that what we do is the 18, when you want to go to the investor, when we start, we support you. Okay. But we don't it's pay the full responsibility. No, yeah. because eighteen years, um, by our constitution, adult, okay. <laughs> you get me. I do understand that it's hard, yeah. and I understand, I understand you can't do everything. You can't I, do yeah. everything. So maybe I'm generalizing. It's not with everybody, but if you are not careful, you give them that. Yeah, that sense of entitlement. Okay. You know, they feel that everything must be done for them. Okay. So for 18 years, we encourage you that, listen, find something to do. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, I do get, even today, somebody sent me a message. They want a sales, you know, person. So we recommend, Okay. you know, yeah. we have I, some of them, whilst they are home, we have people who give skills training yeah. who say, oh, I have an opening. If you can give me 10 of your girls to, I'll just train them for free. Okay. It's a tough world, yeah. Emma. You have to. It's a tough yeah. world, especially for us women. Yeah. If you're not able to stand on your own, it becomes a problem. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Michaela. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so um, a really big thing that we've been studying in our program is Sankofa, like know your past and know where you come from to know where, you, where you're going to go. And I was curious, like you mentioned how important it is to un uncover, know yourself and like have a strong sense of identity, you know, so that like you're confident in life. And I'm curious, like what advice do you have, like steps we can do or actions we can take to start learning ourselves if we don't even know like where to start? Okay. Okay, that's this, um, a whole program on its own. <laughs> because that's one of the things I talk about, most as I call it, whilst you wait. You need to know, and it's just like people asking you, how do I identify my purpose or whatever it is? You need to sit down, have a conversation with yourself. What do you like? What don't you like? What makes you angry? What excites you? What makes you vulnerable? You know, what gives you power? What do you do that makes you really, you know, um, confident and happy? Because I say that nobody was born confident. We all learn. We are either raised to be confident or we learn. Some of, some, sometimes it's a facade, you know, put on. But gradually it becomes part of you, you know, becomes part of you. You, you be, everything, there's a saying that everything when you do it a number of times, it becomes a habit. Yeah. You know, so you start by doing in that. So know yourself by asking yourself questions. Ask about your history, your background. Um, if your parents are around, your grandparents are around, not that it's, um, there's something that is um, hereditary. There are things that is certain traits, sometimes sicknesses and conditions and whatever, or character traits and everything. We may do whatever, but sometimes it's there, you know. And we Africans, we, there's something we call, you know, who you are named after, you know, somehow, indirectly. It's, it's kind of, you know, has a bearing on you. My little girl is named after the paramount queen mother of her queen, my husband's area. And Lord, that girl. <laughs> she <laughs> you embodies know. her names. And she's a Friday born, just like me. <laughs> You won't believe it. I, I'm, I, it was when I was 45, when I was going to marry, that um, it's called Professor Poku. He's, um, he teaches traditional you know, stuff. And then he asked me, do you understand your name, Efia, the Friday born? And I said, Friday born. He said, no. Efia means bibia efifi, something that germinates. Yeah. So... If you understand it and you embody it, since then, I tell me, anytime I go through any challenge, I say, I'm a fear, I will germinate. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I will come out of this. I can't be buried. I will come out. And then I'm dansua. Dansua means bibia a danso, okay. something that is unique. Okay. So I use, I speak it, it's, they call it words of affirmation. Yeah. I live it. Yeah. So like every day of birth, 
there's something ama there's a meaning to mm. why it's not just because you are monday or tuesday born mm. there's a meaning to mm. that and then your middle name mm. and even your surname mm. some of these things it helps you psychologically it may not have any scientific <laughs> you know but psychologically it helps you before you go anywhere before you do anything you 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 have um, your source of power and strength even in our weaknesses our weaknesses can be our power growing up talking was my weakness really? everybody yeah, yeah everybody used to tell me you talk too much oh you talk too much you talk too much you talk too much now i, le- I make a living out of talking <laughs> <laughs> you, you you get me sometimes people will say oh you are this you are that you are that but you own it and you understand why you are what it is or you accept that this is me can i do something about it of course yes if i can't how can i make it work for me how can i work it first you face challenges then there will be the worst the negativity this bad energy but then you don't give up you keep going if you believe enough if you are passionate about it if you imbibe it in your body soul and spirit it begins to work for you i learn from her all the time that's a very compliment yeah oh, i learn from her <laughs> all the time you know she doesn't know the the the, the, the word and the misogyny um, i learned it from her pain <laughs> and the meaning of it after so many years of you know that i hadn't even heard the word before you know, but today I'll boldly talk about it. Somebody will think, oh, this woman is right. <laughs> How did you know? Who <laughs> I learned it from here. She doesn't even know. We learn from each other. So that's it. Awesome. Now, Dr. Amma, Opukwaja, your final words. Um, I'm always inspired um, when I meet you and talk to you. And it's humbling when people you've watched on TV and looked up to tell you that they learn from you. Mm. This, this morning when I was coming, my little boy looked at me. I had this headband on and mm. said, oh, mommy, your head, yeah, this is what he said, your head is really nice. I said, oh, Nana, that's so sweet mm. of you. Thank you. He said, you are welcome. I said, that made my day. This is second to that. This has mm. stopped my day saying that you learned from me. I'm, yeah. yeah, it's humbling. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, um, I make it a point to bring my students to talk to you and to listen to you. And I always appreciate that you have, you take the chance to mm-hmm. want to meet us and even to host the whole program about mm-hmm. us. That's when you told me that I was like, just let us come and listen to you. I said, mm-hmm. no, I would make this about you. And you are grateful for that. We'll go, we'll debrief. I'm sure they will tell me a lot of the yeah. nuggets. Now we are overwhelmed. That's why we are not talking <laughs> as much as we should, but we'll right. debrief and I let you know. And yeah, so. Yeah. Keep on till you are 70. Even when okay. you come with a stick, you sit here and I'll still come with my students. You see? <laughs> <laughs> I'm selfish like that. So we appreciate you. Um, good job like always. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you also for coming. I hope you've had and you go back more empowered, enriched, you know, to break you know, and brightening everywhere you go. I, I believe I'm a strong believer of, you know, being a light wherever you find yourself. And Doc, I make you this promise, as long as the standpoint is on, anytime you get your students, we'll give you the opportunity to be here. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah, so, yeah, we'll wrap up. So can three of you tell me what you've learned from this experience okay. briefly? Then we'll wrap up. Then I'm done. Okay. Who? Mark. Who wants to? Mark. Yeah. Mark, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so over here I've learned that uh, one must know his or herself and then identify where he or his or herself is coming from mm. to be able to achieve a lot of things in life. And so before anything, you need to identify yourself, know yourself, and be yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Anybody else? Aisha. That's no, a who, who raised? Somebody raised their hand behind. Um, I think similar to what Mark just said, um, I definitely think a lot of what I learned today was about kind of knowing yourself and kind of being confident in who you are. Um, and going back to Michaela's question about like how you go about doing that, um, I think I learned a lot about okay. that. <laughs> okay. Who else? Diana. Yes. Um, I've been very inspired by how you've connected your contemporary journey to the traditional self. I think for the longest time, I, I grew up thinking that tradition was wrong, but like coming to Ghana, even as a Kenyan, mm. I've just been learning a lot about how rich our culture is as Africans. And I'm inspired to like go back to my country and learn the specific culture in my country and embrace that with my contemporary self. Okay. Wow. Now, I want the, from Germany. Yeah. Fenya. <laughs> well, she's? Fenya. Fenya, okay. Yes. Um, I have to second that. I feel also yeah. very inspired. Um, and I really liked learning about how you're having an impact on your community. And I think that's something I'm definitely taking from here, um, as well as all of your other wisdom that you've shared with us. So thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank you. You wanted to say something? Okay. Okay. Same here about the culture. Yeah, I've been a Ghanaian, but this program has really taught me a lot and inspired me about. And funny enough, the great people I've met so far do not joke with that tradition. And that has really, really inspired me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Then. <laughs> So that's it for The Standpoint. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. And remember, never, ever forget who you are and where you're coming from. Okay? Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.